welcome to the Release Your Blocks podcast. I am your host, Victoria Bond. Join me as we chat about mindset, consciousness, and turning up your potency so you can get clear on your divine mission here on earth. I'm a spiritual empowerment coach. I use intuition, mediumship, and life coaching with my clients so they can create the life they truly desire. I believe we are here to be wealthy and healthy. If you desire more of this in your life, then this is the podcast for you. My mission is to share my knowledge of entity clearing, shifting limiting beliefs, and becoming more conscious within our bodies and minds so we can fulfill our life's purpose. I will be bringing you weekly podcasts with interviews, solos, and pre-recorded juicy lives from my socials. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And if you do, I would love you to please follow me here and find me at Holistic Energy Shifting on Facebook, where you can find a heap of free inspiration and information to shift the energy and grow abundance. Now let's get into today's episode. Okay, so thank you guys for joining us and thank you so much. This is Kerry. Kerry is from South Africa and she is a human design reader. And I'll let her tell you a little bit about what human design is. But basically the reason why I wanted to bring Kerry on is because human design just in the last probably two months, it has not been long, has come into my awareness. And I realized that I hadn't been aligning to my human design. Therefore, I was functioning differently than I could be. So now that I've been aligning and doing what's actually required for me, I'm actually becoming more abundant and I'm feeling more like myself. So it's taken me a while to align, but my life is changing. So I desire that for you guys as well. So welcome so much, Kerry. And I'm going to leave it over to you to tell us a little bit about what human design is to start with. Cool. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Hello, everybody. I hope before I begin that you've all got your body graph to look at. Have you all downloaded it before? Okay, cool. I think it just will be nice to have that to refer to as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so human design was created in the 80s, 1987, I think, by Ra Uruhu, um, who was the founder of human design. And he pretty much had a seven day meditation where he kind of downloaded this information, which he called human design. And it was a way of looking at ourselves really deeply and how our energy works. And what he did was he combined astrology, the Kabbalah, the I Ching system, the energy chakra system, and the hexagram system, and gave us human design, which really, if you look at it, is just a blueprint for your energy and for your energetic type. We all have different defined energy centers and open energy centers, and these tell us which types we are. But essentially, in human design, it's said to be our blueprint. It's said to be what our soul or our spirit wanted to have in this lifetime, what characteristics, what gifts, what traits, what strong energies, what open energies we wanted to have in order to live the life we want to live in this lifetime, have the experiences we want to experience and learn the lessons that we need to experience in this lifetime. And so what happens for a lot of us is we are born with this energetic blueprint. It really is just a picture of our aura when you look at that body graph. And we kind of get conditioned out of our natural way of being through teachers, through our parents, through the media, through society, figures of authority, we kind of get encouraged to embrace certain parts of ourselves and encouraged to disregard other parts of ourselves. Or we are taught we need to be doing this to be successful or not doing this to be successful. And the truth is we can't all be put into one box. (laughs) We are all different. All of our energies are different. Some of us are meant to be go, 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 going every day. Others are meant to be resting more often and or working in shorter bursts. And so we're all different. And what human design does is it shows us our energy type. So it shows us how we exchange energy with others and with the world and how best to support that and embrace that and take advantage of it as well um, for our greater good. Um, It also shows us our strategy, which is how we create opportunities for ourselves in this lifetime, the best way to create opportunities for ourselves. So we're not constantly bashing our head against a brick wall or taking two steps forward and one step back. Um, It really helps us live in flow and in alignment with the way our energy works. And then also we are given an authority which really is our final decision-making process in life, how we best make our decisions. And it's different for everybody. Some of us have splenic authority. Some of us have sacral authority, which is the gut. 
feeling. Uh, some of us have emotional authority. There's quite a few different authorities and we all have our different one as well. So yeah, those three things really make up our toolkit in human design, the more practical side of our charts. And knowing and understanding those things about ourselves can really help us live in, in more and flow with our energy and lead us to more opportunities rather than brick walls. So yeah, that's a little bit of an introduction to what human design is. And it's super multi-layered. I mean, we're just talking about the toolkit today. Um, about the energy types, we can go into channels, into the arrows around the head and what those means, all the gates as well. It's super multi-layered. But yeah, it's really the most freeing self-awareness tool that I've ever had or read into. And that's why I became a reader because once I found out that I was a manifesting generator and that I'm energetically supported in pivoting all the time and changing my mind and being a speedy little creator and bringing things out in the physical plane really quickly, I felt less guilty about the fact that I'm always pivoting and I haven't stuck to one thing my whole life. And I really felt seen. I was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, this is actually how I'm supposed to be living. Instead of beating myself all the time because I studied to be a teacher and I'm 35 and I've never taught today in my life. <laughs> so it really is giving, it gave me that permission. And that's why I'm so uh, passionate about it and teaching it to others as well. <laughs> Is that a good explanation? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And I think um, I just want to like pre-frame to you guys, if you don't know what a splenic authority is, and most of you, you know, would know about, you know, the sacral and stuff like that, um, but you can actually go do your own research on this as well. Like there's tons of podcasts and stuff like that. Um, I'm a, personally, I'm a splenic authority, and I was like saying to my design writer, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> but um, it's one of those things that you can kind of learn about. And there's the different arrows and the, like you say, the gateways and stuff like that. And it can be used in different ways, like with relationships, with your children. Like I know you can layer up the different designs and see how that creates its own design and stuff like that as mm -hmm. well, eh? Yeah, so it really works so well for relationships. You know, we all the gates always have opposite gates as well. So if we look at our partner's gates or our children's gates, we show where connections happen there, where we can best support each other. Our energy centers as well. Some of us have open energy centers, some of us have closed energy centers, and we can balance each other in that way as well. Or support our partners as well, knowing perhaps that your partner has emotional, like that emotional energy center closed. You know they're going to be someone who's high and low every day. They have that set wave of emotions, and you can support them in that. And if you are an open emotional person, so you don't have access to a set wave, of emotions you're a complete empath you can support yourself in that and explain to your partner as well that i'm going to be taking on your emotions so all the energy centers do is when they're closed so if you look at your body graph and you see the colored in centers those are closed those are strong within you those you can place value and definition on and that is your medicine that you share with others and then your open energy centers that's where you are open to influence it's where other people share their medicine with you and so learning about how to manage those is really great as well so in a human design reading we would go through all of your open and closed energy centers and explain how best to understand that and embrace that as well I, yeah. love that too. I didn't really ever I couldn't really understand the open and the closed. so mine is my throat and my heart though they're closed and which is funny because mm -hmm. I'm very heart driven and I talk a lot <laughs> and the rest every other thing is open and I'm yeah. like, yeah, so that actually makes sense. So you guys, I recommend you look at what the ones that are colored in, the ones that are clear, because that's huge yeah. in itself. <laughs> so would you guys tell us a little bit more about the non-theme and the strategy? Because this was a thing that changed my business. And I was wondering why I'd reach out to people and go, hey, come and do this thing. And I'd always mm -hmm. reach out to people and some, I would feel like I couldn't do that where I know many gens can go out and ask mm. for things where I'm a projector and I know that my that's just not how I'm supposed to work. So if you could explain to us what the non-theme is, mm. maybe the non-theme and the theme for the different five types. Okay, so the emotional themes you're talking about, the not-self and the signature. Yes, but okay. before we, maybe before we go there, because I'm doing the whole jumping thing, could you tell <laughs> us what the five different human designs yeah. are? I'm so sorry. Oh, maybe we should go there first. It's okay. I'm going to mute myself. 
<laughs> Don't stress. I like having someone to chat to, to. But yeah, so there's five different energy types in human design. We have the generators and the manifesting generators who are our sacral beings. So they have access to that red square located over the sacral area, over the reproductive organs. That center is closed in the manifesting generator and the generator. That is all about passion and desire. Generators and manifesting generators, just as you cannot you know, recreate or procreate with people you don't feel passion for, for the generates, the manifesting generator and the generator, it's like that for everything in life. They need to feel that passion. They need to feel that desire about everything they engage their energy with. So manifesting generators and generators have access to that life force, workforce, creative, reproductive, busy, busy energy. I like to call it the kick up the butt energy. <laughs> Because it gets them going, it gets everybody else going. When they are aligned with what they love doing and what they're passionate about, they have the ability to create energy, both for themselves and for the people around them. They are our energy creators, our energetic beings. And they really are here to kickstart things, to bring things into the physical plane. They are happy to work long hours. They can even feel, have access to second winds. So at the end of the day, they might push through and work till like 12 at night if they're loving what they're doing, if they're passionate about what they're doing. They have that extra access. And it's a beautiful thing because they are meant to share that energy with the other non-energetic types. So those would be the types that don't have access to the sacral energy. That's our manifestors, our projectors, and our reflectors. Okay, so just in general, I'm going to talk about the man gens and the generators first because they are the most predominant energy type. They're together, they make up over 60% of the population. So our pure generators, first of all, their relationship to energy is to create, to lift, to share, and to magnetize. They are pure life force in motion. They have a very attracting aura and a juiciness to their energy. So when they walk into a room and they're loving what they're doing, they're passionate about what they're doing, people turn around and go like, oh, what is Sally doing? Like, she just is shining. I want a piece of that. And other people almost, they recognize that shiny energy in you and they want a piece of it. They want to take advantage of it also as well, like because especially if they don't have access to that energy. So generators really are here to dance with life and to engage their energy, to move their community forward in a way that is meaningful to them as well. Generators don't just want to be highly successful and money, you're making lots of money, although of course we all want that. But for them, it's about satisfaction in every moment of every day. They want to love what they're doing all the time. And they also want to be moving the community forward. A lot of them are very concerned with making sure the people around them are, are healthy, are, are feeling good as well. And when they are doing what they love, people can't get enough of them. And that's how they have that attracting magnetic aura. When they're doing what they love, people want to work with them. People want to be their clients. People want to take them out on a date. People want to be their best friends. And so they will have a lot of things to respond to, which is their strategy in life. It's responding to things in their outer reality, responding to what is in the path in front of them. They are also the natural hustlers and doers of the society. I'm not one for hustle culture, even though I am a generator. You know, I'm not into the hustle and the girl boss thing at all. But out of all the energy types, generators and man gens, they can hustle when, they, when need be. They can stay up late. They can find a connection. They can sort things out. They are meant to hustle a little bit in life. And they have that energy. They're energetically supported in doing that. Generators have to listen to their gut feelings. Same as a manifesting generator. They need to feel that excitement in their gut, those butterflies. It's almost like, I want to say like a sexual excitement because it is over the reproductive organs, but they need to feel that excitement about whatever they're engaging their energy with, their work, their relationships, their exercise, the food that they're putting in their mouth. They need to feel that excitement. Otherwise, they burn out. And it's very sad. Generators are not meant to burn out. We're supposed to have this energy that just goes and goes and goes. But when we are doing things we feel we should be doing instead of the things that our gut tells us we need to be doing, the stuff that makes us excited, when we're doing the commitments, oh, a good daughter should do that, a good wife should do that, we lose access to that. We all we push away that sacral energy. And that's when we burn out as generators and manifesting generators as well with that sacral energy. So do away with the shoulds. Listen to the gut feeling. Am I excited about this? Yes, I'm going to do it. Am I not excited about this? Sorry, friend. I know a good friend should come help you move this weekend, but I've actually got a passion project on that I want to do. So I'm sorry. Maybe I'll come help you for an hour, but I'm not helping you the whole weekend. <laughs> the shoulds are the things in life that hold generators and manifesting generators to an extent back. 
We have to listen to our juicy, excited energy. Being aware, of course, that people will take advantage of that energy. So they're going to ask us, please help me with my website. Please help me move house. I don't know how to do because a lot of the other energy types don't have access to that consistent energy. And that's why you have to listen to the sacral and your other authority as well if it's not completely sacral. Some generators have emotional authority as well. You have to listen to that authority before committing because once you do, most generators will follow through on that. And even if they're hating it, they'll carry on doing it. So you have to listen to that gut as the generator. Okay, so that's a generator. And they are meant to have more of a, a deliberate process in life. They are here to master things. And, and they do it a little bit more deliberately than the manifesting generator, which is where I want to bring this distinction now, um, the difference between the generator and the manifesting generator. So the manifesting generator is the pure generator plus the manifester to Together. They have access to the throat energy, which is the mark of the manifester, connected to one of the motor energies, which is usually obviously the, the sacral energy. So that means they have the ability to have these impulses and initiate things, as well as that stamina of the sacral energy to push up their sleeves and get down to business. Like, I want to do this. I've now got the energy to do it as well. So that really makes them speedy little creators. They are the speedy little creators of the universe. They master things super quickly. Man Jane's will be like, oh, I'm interested in astrology, for example. They'll go buy all the books and they'll read about them and they'll feel like they've mastered it in a month or two. And then they'll maybe get a little bit bored of it. And then they're going to go off and look into the Enneagram or, I don't know, copywriting, whatever it is. Manifesting generators master things a little bit quicker and they get bored quickly as well. And they are meant to be pivoting. They are meant to be bringing things onto the physical plane very quickly, bringing them here for people to engage with. And then they might get a little bit bored of it and they want to move along. What happens with this is a lot of manifesting generators you know, we kind of get conditioned that we should be like generators. You must stick to one thing. You've started this company. You've put in all the work. Two years later, now you're selling it. Why? Why are you bored with this? You should just carry on with this. Or you study to be a doctor. Now suddenly, why are you being a homeopath? What, what's going on here? And so a lot of them are made to feel guilty by society for wanting to pivot, for being like, I'm actually bored. My sacral energy is no longer excited by doing this. I want to change now. And so it's super important that manifesting generators reserve the right to change their minds in life. Teach themselves that and teach those around them as well. The more they force themselves to trust down one path, when that energy has run out and they're no longer feeling the passion, the more likely they are going to burn out as well or just feel completely not in flow. Okay, so when they're living correctly, manifesting generators are like little superhumans. They get things out there quickly, or they're meant to be getting things out there quickly if they're living in alignment and they haven't been conditioned out of it. They're meant to get things out there quickly. And then once they feel like they've mastered that, energetically supported in finding something else or starting something else or adding something on top of what it is they're already doing. Yeah, and once again, they usually have that sacral gut feeling as their prime authority or their, sorry, their, yeah, their authority, that sacral gut feeling. Sometimes they might have emotional authority on top of that, which is emotional authority is waiting 24 hours before saying yes or no to something. But essentially, the gut feeling there is still very important. Okay, so that's the manifesting generator and the generator, our two sacral beings. And then we move on to the non-sacral beings, our non-energetic beings. So these are the manifestors, the projectors, and the reflectors. And if you look at their body graphs, they do not have a closed sacral center. Their sacral center is open, which means that their energy is inconsistent. It depends on the people that they are around. And they can take on that energy and feel like they can be a generator or a manifesting generator. They'll feel like, oh, I need to keep up with everybody else. And they sometimes can do that. Many projectors, as we were speaking about earlier, like Victoria said, she lived her whole life as a manifesting generator until she had that breakdown. And it's very, very common for projectors, for manifestors, and for reflectors to have a breakdown. Usually a midlife crisis kind of vibe, but it's happening earlier and earlier now because I think life is just so fast paced. I'm having so many projectors and reflectors who have had a breakdown in their early 30s, usually after their Saturn returns where things start becoming real after we turn 29 and they start to realize, oh, work is too much for me. I'm exhausted. Some of them literally get sick. I've had a client in New York who was a fast-paced lawyer, corporate world vibe who got breast cancer at 31 and was forced to slow down and is now a meditation coach. She had to take that time, the two years to be like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not supposed to be, you know, completely living and, and climbing up the corporate ladder. 
my whole life. So manifestors we're going to chat about first, they make up only 8% of the population. And it's kind of sad because we are all taught to live like manifestors. Manifestors are the only energy type that are energetically supported in having an impulse or a dream or a vision waking up the next day and just going out there and initiating, starting that thing. And all of us have been taught that we need to be like manifestors. If you have a dream, just go out there the next day and just start it. But the truth is only manifestors are supported in this. The rest of us need to wait for that collaboration from the universe. We need to wait for those breadcrumbs in our path. Um, So manifestors, they are very rare. They are very powerful. They are the trailblazers of the energy types. They are here to rally energy together and gather momentum in a direction. And they really have quite a a penetrating aura as well. It's It's an energy, a selective aura, I would say, because manifestors will either be able to rally up support with their powerful throat energy, or they will get people that completely don't like them or agree with them or or get on with them. So a lot of manifestors, although they are huge trailblazers and they have this beautiful communication ability, they also at the same time will have those people that don't support them or don't get on with them. And so then they will... or it's out of their condition, but they will want to people please. And that's the one thing that holds manifestors back. For the man gens and the generators, the shoulds in life hold them back. But for the manifestors, you know, it is trying to people please when they're not supposed to people please. They're supposed to be out there following those divine impulses that they get and going out there and creating these movements. Okay, so that is the manifestors and their strategy for life is just to inform generators and manifesting generators. Your strategy is to respond Um, and for manifestors, it is to inform others, to keep other people informed of what it is they're doing. They can battle with communication, especially with their loved ones um, or the people that they're close to. That's the one thing that can hold them back. And so they need to be informing. So in business, you know, they need to be sharing on social media. This is what I'm doing right now. This is the project that I'm doing. Just keeping everybody up to date with what it is they're doing because they can get stuck in these little tunnels where they're just creating these movements and they're trailblazing um, and they can come get completely neglectful of those around them. Okay, so that is the manifester. Um, And so then we have the projectors. So projectors are our little wise beings. They make up about 20% of the population and their relationship to energy is to tweak to guide and to bring efficiency to everybody. They really are here to be the guides of the tribe. They have an ability to see something the way that others can't, whether that's reading into people, devising systems, designing new ways of doing things. Each projector has a special ability of their own. And if you had to liken the energy types to animals, all the other energy types would be the animals on the forest floor. They would be playing and hunting and doing their thing. Projectors would be the birds sitting up in the canopies, looking down at everybody else and seeing like, oh, if the lion goes over there and hunts there, he could find some food. And if the rabbits hit over there, it wouldn't be hunted. Like we can see as projectors, what everybody should be doing. Um, So we really are here to be the guides. And it is kind of hard for projectors because for them, their energy can be a little bit intense for other people, especially, you know, if they don't wait for people to ask for their advice. So if projectors go out there and start giving unsolicited advice, because they know, they honestly, they know what everybody should be doing. They can see like, if my best friend just broke up with that guy, like life would be so much better. Or if this person did this, if she became a teacher, she loves children, like she'd be such an excellent teacher. But their advice, they have to be invited in order to share. Otherwise, they can sometimes come across as maybe being a little bit all up in your grill or a little bit bossy or a little bit assertive, especially in their youth. And so the projector needs to wait for the invitation. They have so much wisdom. They are the natural guides for the world, but they need to wait for that invitation or they can come across as being a little bit too forceful. Their energy might be a bit intense for people that maybe haven't asked for that advice. And the one thing with projectors, you know, they are open in the sacral center, so they can taste the energy creation and the passion and the desire of the other energy types, especially of the generators and the manifesting generators. And so they are here to be like, you know, you really love doing this. Why aren't you doing this with your life? They are here to guide us all. 
It's very common for projectors to be impatient with their energy, especially once they learn that they're not meant to be doing, doing, doing all the time. Projectors need rest. They have inconsistent energy. And although they might feel like they should have to keep up with the generators and the managings, that's, that's the problem that they have is they spend a lot of, them time, of their time beating themselves up over the fact that they can't just make things happen. Or when I do make things happen, I'm super exhausted and it's not in flow. I don't feel in alignment. That was a slog. Why does it happen so easily for everybody else? I'm battling here. Um, and it's really important that they understand that they're not here to do that. The more projectors learn to trust the flow of life, instead of trying to keep up with the generators and the manifesting generators, the more things start happening for them, ironically enough. The more the recognition comes, the more the invitations come. So it can be a tough one for projectors to kind of get into that, especially when we've been taught a whole life, go, 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 do, 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 be proactive. Like, you know, go get out there. Um, but projectors, once I must say, I love doing readings for projectors because they often are the, the most misunderstood understood out of all the energy types and when they get their reading they're like oh it all makes so much sense like I know I needed I needed to rest more I need to be in my flow more um, so projectors really need to be like the lighthouse shining their lights um, sharing what they're doing uh, but in a non-forceful way and waiting for the ships to come in waiting for the ships to see their light to recognize their skills and to come to them and say oh I love what you're doing please can you help me and then it's almost like a snowball because once a projector is recognized it's word of mouth especially and then one person tells their friend about you and it just goes down and down and down and that's how you start really shining and sharing your abilities with every Everybody sharing your gifts and being that guide, bringing that efficiency into people's lives. And once again, their strategy is to wait for the invitation, wait for that recognition. It is hard because it doesn't come as quickly as there are things to respond to. Generators and mangens get things to respond to almost every day. Projectors have to be a little bit more patient in waiting for those invitations. But in the meantime, just spending their time honing their special skills, sharing what they're loving doing, what they're passionate about in a non-forceful way, waiting for that recognition to happen. So that's the projectors. Um, and then the reflectors, who are the rarest energy type, there probably isn't one in this group. Honestly, I've only ever done a reading for one reflector and I've done, uh, must be over 200, 300 readings now, and I've only ever done one. So they make up less than 1% of the population. And if you look at their body graph, they are completely white. They do not have one energy center colored in. They are super, super open, empathetic on every level, emotional, spiritual, every, physical, uh, identity. Everything is completely open. And we call them reflectors because they are here to reflect and to mirror society. And it's said like that every community, every tribe needs a reflector to reflect back the health of that community. If the reflector is anxious, if the reflector is depressed, we know that everybody else is as well because they take on everybody's energies and they reflect what's going on here. So they are super rare energy types and human design and they really are the mirrors for society with the greatest potential for wisdom so open energy centers if you look at your graph the white centers your open centers are what we call in human design our wisdom centers they are open because we are open to influence from other people's energies and so for the reflectors, they are the most open to energy. So they need to learn. They will have lots of lessons to learn. And although it can be an uncomfortable process, at the same time, they become the wisest almost out of all of us because they've learned those lessons and then they can share those lessons. They can share and reflect that wisdom back to the rest of us. Um, so a common challenge for the reflectors, though, is that they are like little blank slates with very little of their own defined energy. And growing up in a world where we are very much like what are you here for? Who are you? What's your identity? What are you doing? Can be scary for reflectors. They're like, I don't know. Like, I'm just, I don't know. When I'm around you, I feel like this. When I'm around this, I, this person, I feel like this. And so it's very confusing for them. But understanding that they operate so differently from everybody else is the first step for reflectors to understand that they need space to feel like they are, you know, if something bad happens in the world, they're going to feel that pain. They're going to feel that anxiety. They're going to feel that sadness. And we need to give them that space. So, for reflectors as well, they feel so free once they find out that, oh, this is why I'm always feeling anxious around these situations. And it's very important for reflectors to make sure that they have a solid community and environment that they love, that they feel comfortable. As soon as they feel uncomfortable in a group or a situation that they're living in, environment is so important for them. Community is so important for them. They need to change. Take the lessons that they've learned and move on. And their strategy for life is to wait a full lunar cycle before making decisions, which is 28 days 
days. They really need to sit with those decisions, talk about them with everybody else, feel the gut feelings when they're around certain people and take a long time to make those decisions. They really need time to make those decisions. So yeah, those are the five different energy types. (laughs) In a nutshell, I mean, there's so much more to go into, but yeah, for the purpose of today, I think I've covered what those uh, five are all about. Um, So should I move into the not self themes? Yes. So yeah, I'd love to touch on the non-self themes and also um, if we get a moment to talk about, because this is a part of a business program, talk about Mm -hmm. how um, maybe like a, like a little point on every human design Mm -hmm. on something that we can do, because myself as a projector, I've got to say, I went to bed crying when I found out I was a projector because I was like, how am I going to fit in? I've been working however many hours as a manager and trying to manifest everything. And here I am now going, how am I going to get everything fit in in four hours a day? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I know I'm amazing, but like you said, we hit burnout. And what I found really interesting about what you said about the generators is I know quite a few generators and my husband is one, but he's emotional authority. So he's a highly yeah. emotional. And if they are not excited and satisfied with what they're doing, they mm. are like, whoa, like one of my best friends mm. is a generator. And when they're out of alignment, they just like, they get exhausted and overwhelmed and stuff. So I just wanted to, you know, touch base and say, I've actually noticed that with um, people in my life. So it's kind of yeah. crazy how this stuff really is real. It's, it's really, it's really sad to watch an MG or a man, many gen or a generator when they're not passionate, when they're not satisfied with what they're doing every day. I've watched my husband now with lockdown. He's in events and hospitality. So he was doing events and weddings, which of course, as we know with COVID, those have kind of been cancelled. And he has been like so lost because he doesn't have that passion every day. I mean, he keeps himself busy. He's pretty much like, redone our whole house over lockdown <laughs> he's like made new storerooms and playrooms and it's been crazy but I can see like at the, he's like a little bit lost because he hasn't had there's so much sacral energy with the man gens and the generator that sacral energy is busy it wants to be busy it needs to be busy and so when they have nothing for them to be passionate about they can feel really lost and they can feel yeah dissatisfied and they can feel that frustration because that is their not self theme is that feeling of frustration of stuckness like oh I don't know what I'm doing what's going on here um, and it really is sad because they lose access to that energy and they don't have that energy to share with themselves and other people and so the people around them are like oh my god it used to be so much fun or like there used to be so much energy and I felt so alive when I was around him and he made me feel like I could do that and so it is yeah it is, it's really intense so yeah let's chat about those things so we can notice them in ourselves and in others as well because we're going to talk about the emotional markers here that let us know when we're in alignment and when we're not in alignment when there are things that need to be addressed so just a reflector quickly I know there isn't anyone here so we'll just go over it quickly but their signature emotional feeling so what lets them know that they're in alignment is that feeling of surprise they love to be surprised and they need to be surprised every day Um, you know they're completely open so they can't really have any any expectations so for them they need that surprise like oh what a good day what a lovely client they love to feel that surprise and when they're not in their um in in alignment they feel disappointments and that's when they are having expectations on everybody else a reflector because they're so open they shouldn't be having any expectations they should just be like waiting for that surprise waiting for the universe to bring them things waiting for people to show them things about themselves and so their not self theme is disappointment when they are starting to kind of really put expectations on everybody so when they're feeling that disappointment that usually means they're not in alignment they're not in flow they need to remind themselves that they are here to be surprised not to have those expectations in terms of business for reflectors talking about strategy you know their strategy is to wait 28 days to make a decision so for them they really need to make sure that they're visible in business and they need to wait before taking action as well they need to gather an inspiring community around them remember community is very important for reflectors they need to have that support so they need the facebook groups the closed community groups where they have that support all the time And they need to move fast when they're inspired um, and then slow down. So when they feel that inspiration, they need to move fast and then slow down to preserve that energy. Remember, they've got no energy. They're like completely open. So they need to be very visible. Um, They need to wait before taking big action. So when I'm talking, I'm not talking about the inspiration. I'm talking like the big action, like the big launches or, you know, releases of new projects. They need to wait that 28 um, days to make sure it's what they want to do. Discuss that with people around them, go through the pros and the cons, all the different things. 
and they need to tune into their energy and try not to hard sell as well. Projectors, reflectors, hard selling is not really their thing, um, but especially for reflectors, um, it can backfire um, as well. So they need to do their own thing and they need to realize once again, they are less than 1% of the population. They need to be different. They just need to be visible. They need to have their strong community take action when they feel inspired and then when it takes for those big decisions they need to really wait really think about things um reflectors also need to <laughs> this sounds terrible but they need to take two days off at least a week where they're not working and i'm not meaning the weekend i'm meaning like in the week as well they really need to have time in nature they are such little they're little lunar beings they're little earth beings they are honestly they're otherworldly they're like from another planet and they need to spend a lot of time in nature um connecting to nature um and they're not supposed to be working every day they need to have those breaks um so yeah reflectors are, are here to do that and then when it comes to manifestors manifestors their signature emotional feeling is one of peace they just want to feel like everything's happy, everything's peaceful, everything's calm. That's kind of what they aim for. That lets them know they're in alignment. I don't know how often manifestors feel peace, though. They do feel like with their lack of community, although they're good at communication and rallying up support in business and work, they often battle with communicating with their loved ones and with their close ones. And so usually the lack of peace in their lives comes from like a uh, misunderstanding with family members or close colleagues as well. So they are searching for that peace. That lets them know they're in alignment. How do they get to that peace? From their strategy of informing, of letting everybody know what I'm doing, answering their husband's messages, answering their best friend's messages, saying, yes, I'm busy. I'm doing this massive, beautiful project. I'm trailblazing. I'm loving this at the moment, but I'm okay. I'll chat to you later or I'll speak to you on the weekend. Because if they ignore or they don't communicate, they create roadblocks for themselves that best friend comes to their door and goes are you alive and you're like i'm busy oh my god now you've distracted me i was there i was doing this so they need to be informing and that helps them maintain that signature emotional theme of peace they're not self-emotional theme is anger so when manifestors are feeling anger with themselves and with others we know they're not in flow we know they're not in alignment their body is telling them there is something that needs to be addressed here usually it's because they're not informing they're not communicating they're not telling their colleagues what it is they're busy with they're not asking their employees or their team how to help them they're just expecting their team to just know what to do they're like oh you haven't told us anything we're not all as fast as you mr manifester so yeah they need to be informing and that anger comes when they feel misunderstood that they feel like why do i have to stop what i'm doing to tell everybody else what to do why can't people just keep up with me the truth is people can't keep up with manifestors they are they are so fast and they are following those divine impulses all the time they're feeling that inspiration um, and they're following on them so they need to be informing otherwise they do feel that anger manifestors in business they are impulsive they feel those impulses they need to inform when they feel those impulses and then go and do that thing. They need to rest a lot as well. Manifestors, they'll get in that zone and they'll work, 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 use up all their energy and then they'll be exhausted. They need to go and rest. It's hard for manifestors to rest, but if you don't rest, you're going you're gonna to gonna fall down because you don't have access to that sacral energy. So follow the impulse, go do the thing, inform others of what you're doing and then rest. Most importantly for a manifestor, you need to build a team and you need to communicate well with your team. But manifestors, they can't do it all by themselves. They think they can do it by themselves. They think they can be like a generator or a manifesting generator, but they really need to build a team behind them and they need to inform that team. You can't expect your team just to know what's going on. You need to build a team in order for you to rest. You are here to start the big things. You're here to have the big ideas, rally up the support, initiate, follow that impulse. But then when it gets to the nitty gritty stuff, you're not going to run out of energy for that. And that's why you need to build a team of support. And then also for manifestors, get away as often as possible. Like you are the energy type that needs to go away for weekends. <laughs> Remove yourself from your home, your office, turn off your phone, turn off your computer and go away for weekends. You need to replenish that energy um, and come back inspired. Otherwise, yeah, really, they can get super, super exhausted. Um, okay. And manifesting generators are the energy type that we are here our strategy is to respond our signature emotional theme is satisfaction so when we are feeling in alignment in flow we are feeling satisfied in our everyday moment not satisfied about that project that's going to be finished next week or that possible client that i might sign manifesting generators need to feel satisfied with what they're engaging their energy and their passion with every single day like i'm feeling 
satisfied with my work today. I'm feeling satisfied with this client. I'm feeling like my gifts are being, I feel like I'm making contribution to society here. Uh, that satisfaction just has to be every day in the moment. If it's not, as we were speaking about earlier, they just lose that energy. They feel frustrated, which is their not self-emotional theme. For manifesting generators and generators, they have that feeling of frustration where they are just feeling stuck, like, ah, oh, nothing's going on there. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I don't know. I don't love what I'm doing. I'm feeling stuck. Where must I go? What direction am I going in? Okay, so for manifesting generators in business, you know, for generators and man gens, <laughs> it, they're kind of lucky because they have consistent energy. So they are the ones that can go out there. They are responding. They can do the hard selling. They just need, the only thing they need to be really worried about is that passion. Are they loving what they're doing every day? Are they feeling that desire, both for their clients and their work, whatever they're engaging that energy with, as long as they feel that passion and that desire, that they're not listening to all the shoulds like, oh, you know, that, that person should is doing that, so I should be doing that. Don't do that if you feel like you should do it. Do it because your gut is excited. Start that new, uh, write that in, in Instagram post in the moment when your gut's excited. Be like, yes, this is what I want to be talking about. This is what I want to be doing. Really listen to that excitement. So manifesting generators, they have the impulses as of the manifester as well. So they feel that impulse. They have that impulse. They need to inform as well. Manifesting generators need to inform as well as response. They kind of have like a two-part strategy because they are manifesting energy and generating energy. So they feel that impulse. They need to inform. So just as like the manifesto, they need to be showing everybody what they're doing. Like, this is a new project I'm working on now. This is what I'm having so much fun about. Put it in your email, put it in your newsletter, put it in your stories, put it in a post. Keep everybody informed of what it is that you're loving doing. And then they need to obviously respond with that hell yes. So even if they feel that impulse, they might change their mind a couple of minutes later when that gut feeling kicks in and it's like, oh, I was I felt that impulse but now I'm not so excited about it. Oh, yes, I am excited. So there is that two-point part. You get the impulse and then the gut feeling kicks in as well. When that gut feeling uh, kicks in, you know, you can go, you can go and do it. So yeah, informing and listening to that impulse and then responding as well. Things to respond to for generators and man gens. Once again, they'll come across their path very often. They might have somebody in the inbox going like, oh, I just love this post you shared about this. Why don't you do a course in this? Or why don't you offer this? I've had so many people and I'm a manifesting generator message me and say, I love this post you shared about this. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? It's like they're almost recognizing my passion and then telling me like things to respond to. So for generators and manifesting generators, they get a lot of things to respond to in business and in relationships as well. Um, but you'll have people suggesting things like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And so once again, you have that thing to respond to. Listen to your gut. Am I excited about this? Yes, I'm excited. I'm going to do it. Am I not excited? No, thanks for the suggestion, but I'm not really keen for that. Remember, once manifesting generators and generators commit to something or they say they're going to do something or tell everybody they're going to do something, they often will follow through on that, even if they don't feel that passion. And that can lead to that exhaustion. So once again, very important to have that gut feeling. Okay, so... Um, Facebook groups are really great for, for manifesting generators and generators. Doing polls as well. So you are like saying, should I do this? And then you have things to respond to. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you should do that. What about this? Really good for you to get those things to respond to from your audience. And don't feel like you won't, it's not going to come across as you being forceful. People love engaging with that energy with a generator and a man gen. So put it out there. Say, this is what I'm working on. Do you think I should do this? What about that? Put out those polls. Put up those questions. Um, and really just remembering that you need to be discerning with what comes up. Even though people give you things to respond to, remember to make sure, I can't emphasize this enough, that your gut is excited about that. Just because somebody tells you you should do a course in, I don't know, feeding for babies or whatever it is, doesn't mean you have to do it. Make sure you have that affirmative, excited gut feeling before you engage that energy or commit to it. Um, and then projectors in business, well, let's just talk about projectors and their, their, their signature feeling first. So their signature feeling um, is one of success, 
recognition and success is so important for projectors. All they want to do is be seen for what they're good at, for being like, yes, somebody's recognized. I am here to guide you. I know the right answers. I know what you guys are supposed to be doing. They are here to be recognized, but they need to wait for that invitation, of course, first of all. So your signature emotion as a projector is that one of success that lets you know that you're on the right path. People are recognizing my gifts. People are recognizing my abilities. They're recognizing that I can help make their life more efficient, that I know where they should be going, that I can guide them. So when you're feeling that feeling of success, it lets you know that you are aligned. Um, And yeah, for projectors, they really do want that recognition. You know, they want those accolades on the wall. They want people to be like, yes, you're so good at this. They really thrive on that. Um, And that's important for them. And then your not self-emotional theme as a projector would be one of bitterness. And that really comes when we are not waiting for the invitations and when we are forcing ourselves to live like the generators or the manifesting generators and then wondering why things aren't happening for us like they are for everybody else. Like I did exactly what that person did. I did that call to action or I put out that hard sell. Why am I getting no emails? Why why is nobody replying to me? And then you can start feeling that bitterness, that like comparison as well. Like why is it not working as well for me as it is for everybody else? So as soon as projectors start feeling that bitterness in life, they need to be like, okay, I'm out of, I'm out of flow. Yeah. I'm out of alignment. I'm supposed to be feeling successful. How do I get out of this? By waiting for the invitation, by relaxing into your energy, relaxing into your flow, sharing about what you love doing in a non-forceful way, being that lighthouse and waiting for the ships to come to you, waiting for them to recognize your skills, your abilities, your talents. Okay, and so projectors in business, they need to wait for the invitation, obviously, and then they can go. Very important for projectors in business not to hustle. We're not yet to hustle. We're not yet to grind as projectors. That is going to exhaust you. You don't need to be hard selling all the time. It's going to be really, it'll, it'll almost repel people from you. Um, you need to focus on recognition and visibility and creating quality content, uh, podcasts, um, you know, live videos, uh, posts, all those sorts of things where you are doing it in a non-forceful way. You're not like paying a Facebook ad to be in everybody's face all the time. They're seeing you all the time and they're like, ah, what's going on here? You need to be creating that very valuable content um, in a non-forceful way. Um, So share about your work, share about your passions. If you're an artist, a projector artist, share about the work that you're doing at the moment. Say, oh, I'm loving creating this. This is you know, memories of my childhood, create those stories, create that beautiful content for people to, to resonate with and to recognize your gifts in a non-forceful way. Um, and that's what actually creates content uh, or meaningful content, valuable content, and will attract others to you. Um, and then put a call to action at the bottom of that. Okay. So instead of being like Facebook ad in your face, Instagram ad in your face, create a beautiful piece of content, a podcast, a a post. And at the end of that, say, if you love this story, um, get in touch with me and we can talk more. No force. No, you don't have to do it. There's no like uh, obligation here. But if you'd like to chat more, let me know. I'd love to speak to you rather than you being that hard selling. Like you need to join my course. Like you will be um, amazing. It'll be the best thing you've ever done if you've joined my course. It's like sharing that valuable content, sharing what you've learned, what you know. And you know a lot as a projector. You are that guide. So share that information information and then have a call to action, a non-forceful call to action at the bottom of that post or at the end of that podcast. And really also for projectors, we need to delegate and we need to outsource. Okay. Remember projectors have inconsistent energy. It says in human design, they're only supposed to work three to four hours a day of that hard slog, you know, that stuff that really tires you out. Um, You need to preserve that energy as a projector. So Projectors are always encouraged. They need to be, if possible, need to work for themselves or have a freelance job or a job where they work per hour or a boss that understands that they do their best work when they have time to be inspired or time to relax, time to sleep, time to nap, time to go out for a walk in nature. Very important for projectors. If they are working eight hours a day or working into the night as well. If they're presenting themselves as a generator or a manifesting generator, they will have that burnout or that breakdown or even their body will get sick in an attempt to slow them down. So they need to delegate. They need to look at outsourcing as well. Not necessarily building a team like the manifester, but like finding that person that maybe can do your copy for you or can edit your copy or that website designer that can help you do those sorts of things. So you can outsource a little bit to conserve some of your energy for creating that valuable content that gets those people to come to you, that helps you shine your light so they will come into your harbor. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, so yeah, creating valuable content rather than that forceful hard selling is best for projectors. Delegating and outsourcing as well. Learn to trust others. I know it can be really hard for projectors because yeah, you kind of feel like I can do it better. But really manifesting generators and generators are the ones that can kind of do everything. They, you know, they maybe get one person to help them if they run out of time. But for projectors, they need to outsource and they need to delegate. Even if it's just like a personal assistant to help you with your emails, um, it'll just give you so much more time for creating that valuable content. And even if you love creating that valuable content, but it can exhaust you as well as a projector. And um, even if you love what you're doing, you can still get exhausted as a projector. So rest is very important for projectors. Lots of sleep, lots of naps, time in nature, or just doing, immersing yourselves, yourself in the things that inspire you. So working really hard for three, four hours a day, creating that content or answering those emails, whatever that hard slog is, you know that stuff that like, really takes it out of you. Keep that to four hours a day, three hours a day, and then the rest of the day, do the things that inspire you. Maybe it is having coffee with a fellow a person that does the same work as you. Maybe it's going to an art gallery, a museum, watching a movie, anything that inspires your work is really great for projectors as well. Okay. So yeah, that I think I've covered in terms of business, what, what different things we could be looking at for all the energy types. Is that everyone? Have I covered everybody? Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. And so, you know what I love, I've got to say what I love so much about all of this is all of us, you know, everyone that this, this whole entire um, session is for are already like coaches or practitioners or up and coming coaches yeah. and practitioners. And I think understanding all of the designs is so potent because I have many gens and generators and if all, all of the different people coming to me and I have a better understanding about how they work. I know that for my many gens, they're going to be non-linear, like totally. And they're going to be like jumping all over the bloody show <laughs> in a good way. So then I can, I can, I've got one-to-one clients and I like literally go, okay, here's the things, what's light for you. So as a projector, I kind of, sometimes I've got to like guide them back in and say, you actually have to do these things to actually get here yeah. sometimes because they are like, yeah party 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 but I also think that understanding our family members and our clients with knowing these different designs is a game changer like my two children are many gens they've mm. never been structured people I've children uh, they go to bed at, they don't we're not massively structured they were terrible yeah. babies because they were never like hardcore routine <laughs> Um, oh my goodness I don't even know if that's a thing but that's what I'm getting from that and my husband is a generator and if he doesn't have a passion or a purpose he is like lost where Mm -hmm. I'm completely like fast I get things done in like two to three hours um super fast super directed um and then I've got best friends that are generators and it's like hey and I keep seeing that they need to realign and I'm like come on Mm -hmm. come back here Mm -hmm. because they get Hired. So knowing this knowledge for my clients and my life has completely mm. changed. So um, I want to thank you for sharing all of that with us. And to go deeper, I know you offer a few different packages and stuff. And I know this isn't the purpose of this actual call, but of course I want a reading yeah. and other people might want to. So how do we find you? Um, and can you just tell us those details, please? Okay, cool. So I've got three different packages. I've got package one, which is um, a real look into the basics of your chart. So your toolkit for human design. We look at your energy type, your strategy, your authority, as well as your open and closed energy centers and also your profile or your personality, which is one of my favorite things about design. I'm a five one and your profile, and your personality is kind of like um, the suit or the character that your soul has chosen to wear in this lifetime. And that's where we learn what we mean to master in this lifetime. So we do that in the first package. So it's like an introduction. The second package, um, which I only do unless, you know, if you've had, if you know those mechanics, first of all, like you, for you, Victoria, you've done one reading already. So you know the mechanics and that is a deeper dive into your little different gates and your channels, your, your arrows around your head. You've got a manifestation arrow. You've got a digestion arrow. You've got an environment arrow. And also we look at your incarnation cross, which is like a theme or trajectory for your life. Um, and then I've got package three, which is both of those together um, at a discounted rate. So it will still happen in two different sessions. But if you book that and pay for it all at once, you get a discount on, you know, if you paid for the other one separately. But I do recommend if you don't want to go with package three, obviously start with package one, especially if you're new to human design. 
And so, yeah, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Kerry Bainborough, as my name says here. No, like all lower case. Um, my website is wearethewildflowers.co.za. And there's a tab there called Human Design. On Facebook, I'm Kerry Bainborough, Human Design Reader. But, um, yeah, I'm sure you'll be able to share all my details there as well. You can find out what readings are um, on my website or on my Instagram, uh, how much they are, I should say. I don't know if I should share here the package. Can I share a file here? Um, I'm not sure. But you do. You have sent me on the uh, stuff. I'll actually put it in the notes okay. so everyone can okay, cool. it with ease. And um, I'm actually really excited to find out the prof- that personality profiling because I'm kind of obsessed with I'm like a, I think I'm a, it's it's right here. It's those little numbers that are on the, they say profile, and I'm a three slash five. So I'm like, oh. dying to know what the heck <laughs> that actually means. <laughs> so I'm going to look at it. I love three fives. They are one of they're my favorite. They are the great life experimenters, and they are just here to, oh, just really live life, get down and dirty with life, and then share what they've learned with everybody else. It's a beautiful energy t- um, a profile. Any Thank other questions? You so much. I know that you could look, there's so many layers to this. And I know you could have talked to us for probably 12 hours straight. Easily. Um, I, I do. She's like, no. <laughs> but I actually do feel like um, this is a really good, a good basis to know what your non-theme is, what your theme is, um, and the understanding of other people. Like, you know, you don't go talking to a projector and making them work 12 hours type of thing because <laughs> it's not going to work. Um, and yeah, understanding your clients better. And it's just another layer that we can put onto all of our amazing geniuses. So thank you so much, Kiri. Thank you. Pleasure. So much. I absolutely love that. Thank you so much, everybody, and keep well. <laughs> And that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining the Release Your Blocks podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear from you. So please leave a review and tell me what your favorite takeaway from today was. There is so much more from where this came from. You can also find me at Holistic Energy Shifting on Facebook, where you can find more content, more coaching, and more guidance. Have a grand and glorious day, and I'll see you next time.